Ashete kitina na na la mata na sonto. Grace te ke pa mai se te ke tala la la satana na ne shete ki. Koloso no no moko satala yata na na ma yata na sete ki. Da na 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 kama yata lolo ya na na sana na ya mana na. Satala yata ra papa ye te te ra satana na re sete ke te re sete ke. Can we all pray, please? Rebama in this house and online. Yetela la la ba sataka. Koro soto ko petera seteke. Grit setana na la la ya na 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 ba seteke. Tere ketera na na koko soto ko. Grishete ke pama ya tala sata. Grishete la 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 ba satara santa na komo koro soto. Kita nana ma seteke telala la sandara la lomoko soto ro ko seteke grana na ba papa ma soto ro soto le yete de seteke te kreta nana na shene nana 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 sandala ya tana nana ma teteke nana 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 mo ko to 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 papa ma ya nana shatala papa ya talala ba ya soro ko mama mama ya tala ya tere setere Mama, mama, ya tere tere ya tara sandar ya na la ke tere na ya na na na. Ya na la la mi ya no lo so no lo mo ya tere me ne ne la ya na na la ya. Jesus, we love you na na ya 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 ya. Be na ma ya la so do do do. Bamba la ya ne le ke tere ne ne. Yena ya sandala ma hona papa ya tiniri ya ni kai hai hai ya sandai ya ponde na la ma ya ni ba ya ya tle ya tini na ya tle bamba na la ya na ya kusondo lo ma ya tini ya yena ya papa ya no 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 mo ya. Bena maya tono suno no mo no maya. Bena kala ya tana sana tiri kiri na. We thank you, Father. You are good. My ela ya suno ya tana. We thank you, Jesus.
Father, we praise you. Be magnified, be magnified. Come on, the scripture says praise looks good on you. Lift up your head, lift up your countenance. That we have to praise him about so many things to be thankful for be reminded of his goodness of his faithfulness of his love and compassion for us it's not about what we don't have it's all about what we can see it's eyes of freedom and eyes Over and over again Cause you are 
of his people. Another version says that he inhabits the praises of his people. We are presence driven because we desire for him to come in light upon us just as he would as we begin to open up our mouth and bless his name. Because you are enthroned on the praise of your people So be in from in my life You are in from on the praises of your people Father, be enthroned in my life. Be enthroned in my life. Take your seat. Take your place. Here I am, be a throne, Father, come and have it this place, take your seat, this is your house, this is your place. Be 
set up your residence in me. Come and inhabit this place. presence father but with our praise that comes forth out of our mouth we honor you father with our faith we honor you with our trust we honor you father with our declaration we honor you father when we believe that you can do all things we honor you father when we believe that you exist but, father we know that you are existing in our lives existing in every space that we are in and beyond so we honor you, Father, with our faith. We say, be enthroned in the midst of our praises. Be enthroned in our temple. Be enthroned in our home. Be enthroned in this space. We give you every room of our heart. Come on, why don't you just relinquish the reins?
Father, that you lead us, you guide us, you direct us every step. Have your way. Scripture says, um, I was reading something earlier today, and uh, I'm going to read it. It says in Psalm 79, O God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the bodies of your servants to the birds of the heavens for food, the flesh of your faithful to the beast of the earth. They have poured out their blood like water all around Jerusalem and there was no one to bury them. And we have become a taunt to our neighbors, mocked and derided by those around us. How long, O oh Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your anger on the nations that do not know you and on the kingdoms that do not call upon your name. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his habitation. Do not remember against us our former iniquities. Let your passion, compassion come speedily, speedily to meet us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of your name. Deliver us. And alone, and atone, excuse me, and atone for our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nation say, Where is their God? Let the avenging of the <clears throat> outpoured blood of your servants be known among the nations before our eyes. That was David's prayer then, as our prayer even this morning. Why should the nation say, where is their God? Let the avenging 
of the outpoured blood of your servants be known among the nations before our eyes. Let us see it. Let the groans of the prisoners come before you according to your great power. Preserve those doomed to die. Return sevenfold into the lap of our neighbors the taunts with which they have taunted you, O Lord. But we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. From generation to generation, we will recount your, your praise. Father, we thank you that you are revealing yourself, that you are causing the nations to see. We thank you, Father, that you are causing nations to know that you are God. We thank you, Father, that nations that have turned their backs on you are, are seeing, Father, who you are. We thank you, Father, for the light of your love. We thank you, Father, for your compassion. We thank you, Father, that your strength is being revealed in every city, that your strength is being revealed in every place. Father, where things have been uh, uh, tried to be done in secret, we thank you, Father, that you are causing revelation, things to be revealed, opening up the dark places. Father, we thank you, God, that even we know that darkness is on the side of you. We thank you, Father, that you are revealing through your light the darkness that has been covered up. We thank you that you are unveiling the things that have been defiled, that in your holy temple that you are causing an unveiling in Jesus name we thank you father that the things that have been ruined you are causing to be raised up in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name we thank you father <clears throat> thank you father thank you father Thank you, Father. Psalms 118 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. So let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Come on, let's say that. His mercy endureth forever. Again, his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say, his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations come past me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They come past me about, yea, they come past me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They come past me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns, for in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust or sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord help me. Come on, he's helping you. The Lord is my strength and my song and is become my salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song and my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doth valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over unto death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter, I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and art before 
art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused, rejected, is become the head, the stone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Come on, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, which has showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horn of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? Because he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Father, we thank you that your mercy is everlasting. We thank you that your mercy is forever. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We lift up a, a sound in our temple, out of our heart, out of our temple, to declare that your mercy is strong, that your mercy is long-lasting, that your mercy is greater than what is coming against us. We thank you, Father, that your mercy endures, that your mercy is faithful, that your mercy has been tried and is still true, that your mercy is setting us up into a larger place. Thank you that you are bringing us to a larger place. Come on, do you believe that? That you are being set into a larger place as we call upon you in our distress, that you are causing on every side, enlargement, enlargement, enlargement. We thank you for enlargement. We thank you that no matter what man is trying to do to us, that we will not step into fear. <laughs> but we remain and take part in the victory because you are our help and that your desire for us is coming upon us in Jesus name that what you desire for us we are confident confident that it is coming upon us in this time and hour in Jesus name we thank you that even as we see nations in confusion nations in derision nations rising up against the word of the Lord the voice of the Lord we thank you father that you are quenching their fire in Jesus name the fire of thorns. We thank you, Father, that you are quenching the, the, the word and the sound of nations and that you are destroying their word as you thrust yourself in the midst with your strength. We thank you, Father, that the Lord is our strength, that the Lord is our song, and that you are our salvation. You are our strength and our song and that you are saving your people, that you are saving the church, that you are redeeming the bride in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Who will agree with that prayer and declaration this morning? Father, we thank you and we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. I had a couple examples I wanted to show you this morning, but I'm going to just tell you that I feel like the, and since that there are things going on in the world that are like a, uh, uh, the way a magician does card tricks where they, they use a sleight of hand. One of the things that they do is while they have one thing going on, uh, they, they have another thing going on. And what you see is what you see, but what you don't see is the sleight of hand. The sleight of hand is the thing that you don't see because it's secret. It's secretly being done. It's not visible. It's so fast that it's being done because you're distracted by one thing that you can't see what's going on on the, on the, it's like, it, it's, it's almost invisibly being done, but it's right in front of your face. So it's right in front of our face. The things that are happening are right in front 
of the church. Be things that are being done are right in front of our eyes, but we're not seeing them. And this is very important, what I have to tell you this morning. Uh, I heard the Father say, yes, we are presence-driven because we've been talking about that and pushing towards that, that we must gain the advantage. We must fast to the finish. We must never stop. We must never give in. It is not a time for weakness. It is not a time for weakness. It is a time for faith. It is a time for faith. It is a, it's, not a, it's not a table or a time for emptiness, but because portions are being divided and distributed. It's not a table of emptiness. Portions are being divided and distributed. There's no need for your table to be empty. You hear? I heard that there is a silencing, though, of apostles and prophets. When he speaks of silence, he's speaking of the mouth of the apostles and the mouth of, mouth of the, and the prophets. Why is this important to know that there is a silencing? Because that's how many times we are led by knowing what to do by what the apostles say and what comes forth through prophecy. There has been a release from the pit of hell to silence the church and her authority in the earth through silencing her voice through the apostle and the prophet. This is not, uh, uh, this is not of, of this, <laughs> let me say it the way that I've been hearing it. <clears throat> it's not the sound of the bride of Christ in the earth. We have another sound that, that has been released. The other is another song that removes your ability to sing in a strange land. Where it ceases to exist in the midst of famine. The scripture says, how we hung our harps in the willow trees. How can we sing in a strange land where we shut our mouth and decided not to release what the father was saying? There has been an uneasiness and a disgruntling or disgruntled souls even within our walls, within our church house. Uneasiness and a disgruntling of souls within our walls. There's been a division of soul and spirit rather than just a building up of each other. There has been some tearing, there has been some tearing down. I heard the father say there is a new song. The song of the Lord is being released. Now we've been talking about the song of the Lord. We've been talking about singing. We've been talking about worship. We've been talking about uh, if we're driven towards his presence, then we are enthroning him. So then his presence uh, is, is made known, made manifest. He is seeking worshipers, which means then when we worship, he comes looking for that sound. He comes looking for that heart. He comes looking for the spirit of those who worship in spirit and truth. So then his presence is, becomes manifest. He is here among us. He inhabits. He is enthroned. He sets himself in the midst of the praise, of the worship of that you bring in your temple, in a room because of what you are releasing. So then that means then his character, his integrity, all that he is becomes manifest in your temple. So if you have sickness going on, he becomes manifest in the midst of your sickness and disease because you are a worshiper and you have uh, made known your worship. So then he shows up. You don't need somebody to lay hands on you all the time. And your scripture says, why so downcast, 
O my soul. So now I put my hope in God, the maker of heaven and earth, and things begin to change because he shows up when I begin to put my hope in him and begin to worship. I'm trying to get you free so that you understand uh, you don't have to deal with some of the situations in your life from a bound place, but you deal with those situations from a free place, which is all I need to do is to begin to open my mouth and sing the song of the Lord that he is singing over me instead of singing what I'm hearing, repeating what I'm hearing in the environments, in the atmosphere around me. I have a keyboard. I don't have it with me today, but I, was, I have a keyboard. The other day I went downstairs and pray, I started praying and my keyboard downstairs makes absolutely no sound at all. It's just clickety, 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 click. There is no brain in it. There is no engine in it. There is no module in it. There is no source for sound. It just makes the, the clicking of the keys. And it's not, it's just audible when you just press a key. It is, it's called a keyboard controller which means then that it uh, makes no sound, but it can control other things. I heard the Lord say to me, just really simple conversation. As I sat there and began to pray that my life is like that keyboard. And whatever I connect to that keyboard can make the sound of whatever I connected to. And that I can change the source of the sound at any time. Not just change the sounds within it, but I can disconnect one brain, one resource, and connect an entire different resource and have a completely different texture and array of sounds because I put a brand new something I like brand new stuff so it's brand new brand new sound brain connected to that keyboard and I can do that for as many times as I have a different resource and he said that he said to me he was just showing me He's not, I never thought of it that way, but he's just showing me and I'm showing you this morning that we can be connected to one source and we can be connected to another source. And each source has a different sound that is being made from us, that we are delivering out of our heart, out of our mouth because of what we're connected to. It only takes one, one, one wire to connect so that my keyboard can control that sound source. Just one wire, one threefold cord cannot easily be broken. I use that one wire just to control it. And then I have two other wires, because it's three total, two other wires that produce the sound. So you can hear, hear, it, hear it. So I have an audio cable that's two of those, left and right. Makes sense? And then, because I, I like it in stereo. And then I have a, another one that helps me control it. A threefold cord can that be easily broken. Hear it prophetically today. Because we have to change our sources. Sometimes we are only connecting to one source. And we've been connected for far too long to this old sound. And we're... And, Everything is funky sounding, old sounding. Sounds like sounds from the 70s, from the 60s. Because you still connect it to that source. And the father told me, stop thinking about yesterday, the past, being connected to the past and making the sounds of yesterday out of your heart out of your belly instead allow new rivers to flow out of you by connecting 
disconnecting from the past and begin to connect to what I am saying today and release that. What was he telling me about? He's talking to us about singing something brand new rather than continuing to sing what we keep and have heard that is familiar, that is from way back when. And I'm not just talking about music. I hope you understand that. I'm talking about sound and, and releasing what the Spirit, of, when the Spirit of the Lord says in the scripture that, that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind, at some point you have to change what you are feeding off of, change and go to another chapter in the scriptures. Go to another book in the scriptures and begin to hear something else that the Father is saying instead of staying around your favorite stuff because he wants to say something bigger, brighter, better, bunch of bees, bee, 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 so that you can get something else besides for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then get on to something else so that your life can sound fuller and not just sound like it's monotone like it's one thing every time we hear from you we only hear one thing every time we see you we we know what we're going to see we know what we're going to hear because your source is only from one plane and, this, and we have to become multi-dimensional and not just one dimensional in this season and not not just in a season but in our lives where we become three dimensional four dimensional five dimensional 11 different dimensions rather than i come to you and we get the same ugly sound all the time what does those sounds sound like sound like every time we come to you you you're 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 uh, you're discompassionate. You have no compassion for anything that's going on. Every time we come to you, you're always depressed. Every time that we come to you, we always are sad. Every time that we come to you, you're full of joy. Every time that we come to you, you got you got something going on. Every time we come to you, you are draining. Every time we come to you, you are this. Every time you you are that. We're that's what we're talking about. So you have to change your source. We know what you're listening to by the sound that comes up out of your mouth because of what has come into your heart and now it's on display in your mouth. And so we're just saying, he's just saying to us, change your source, become something new, transform who you are by linking your life up to the keys of your life, up to something else. Because we're tired. Of the same old sound. Same old sound. I heard the new song brings a solidity to unstable divides and pathways. The new song brings things. If you are dealing with instability in your life, things look unstable. Sing. What? Sing? Uh-huh, sing. Sing yourself out of that pit into a place of stability. Sing the word. Sing a, and release from a new resource. Instead of singing and releasing from your flesh and just how you feel, begin to sing there and then put the word in your mouth and release what he has said about your situation. You may say, I don't even know where to start. I don't have nothing. I just, I just have all my feelings right now. So then sing that because as you release, you will run out of feelings. And as you run out of feelings, then your spirit will come alive and begin to rise and you will begin to sing the word of the Lord. Instead of just singing your emotional state. 
sing and allow the resource that is from heaven to and what he is singing over you to then be repeated out of your mouth. The new song brings solidity, makes solid places that are unstable, that seem divided. He brings those pathways into stability. I was watching a video. I've seen many videos like this. This one, this one was, an, was one of those videos that I just love because uh, it deals with people that have dementia or Alzheimer's. And, uh, and this lady was singing to uh, uh, a gentleman that was, you know, 80, 90 years old or whatever. And he's just, just slumped over in his chair. And as she starts singing uh, some song that he knows that he's familiar with, it triggered in his brain and he began to sing along with her. He couldn't say, he wasn't trying to say hello. He wasn't trying to recognize her for any other thing. But when she began to sing something familiar, then there was a recollection. There was stability that was created in the mind because of something that was done in the past. When, when we have spoken to you about uh, singing and how we sing and it was done in Genesis and it should be continued and when we sing the song of the Lord that that is something that is uh, not just for worship and praise but we begin to greet each other with a song that's because the strength of a song will last with you throughout your entire life. And even when the enemy is trying to put sickness, infirmity, disease in your mind, in your brain, the song will still come forth. When you deal with traumatic events, when you deal with things that will completely cripple you mentally and cause you to react in un scrupulous, scrupulous ways. Phase, times, and seasons that you would have never thought would still be coming back to you that traumatized you. The song of the Lord, the song, even the familiar song, will cause those things to come down and for your peace to come up. I'm talking about singing and releasing another source rather than consistently all of the time entertaining just one source. Make sense? Yeah. I thought to myself, because we always, I always see the dementia Alzheimer person and they're completely out of it and, and somebody's singing just as I am without one plea. And they, and, they, and they were a hymns person, church, old church. And they, I surrender all, I surrender all. Or they were an opera person and they start singing opera and you're not going to hear it now. <laughs> or they were, they, they were old tunes and they, they would sing old tunes to them. And they, they, it's like they come to life suddenly finish the song, and they go back to where. What happens, though, if we begin to do what the scripture says? Greet each other, and, and you speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Then, when the enemy is trying to plague your mind, he has way less opportunity because your life is built on a song. Y'all better hear me today. Father has spoken to us even, listen, about sowing. This whole first half of the year uh, was about sowing and transition, putting seed in the ground. Some of the sowing has dwindled in your life and you need to reactivate it. And I'm not talking about what you think. I'm talking about what you think. Like the prophet who told the king to beat the arrows 
Remember that story? He said, beat the arrows. These are arrows of deliverance. And he just kind of, he just kind of boom, boom, boom. And didn't really do a whole lot more. And then the prophet said, you will win that number of times. But you should have done, you should have just, you should have just went to town and just, it, boom, just annihilated that whole thing as a prophetic act. And then you would have seen continual, consistent, forever victory. But you didn't do that. What you did was you just hit it three times. Three times. And the father was saying, enough is not enough. What you think is enough is not enough. What you, what you consider to be, I have done what I needed to do, now let the Lord do the rest, is not enough. You have to, you're going to have to, you're going to have to beat this thing in the ground. You're going to have to get up off of the the uh, 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 I do a little bit and the Lord do the rest. I do a little bit and the Lord do the rest. And you do just a little. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. That's a lie of the enemy to think that you just do a little and because we understand the mustard seed faith and all that kind of stuff. So we think that all we have to do is just a little bit. No, you, you need to put your stuff in the ground. You need to put your life on the edge. You need to live where you have no other choice but to live for him. It's all or nothing. There is no turning around. There's no plan B. There's no second chances that I'm looking and listening for. It's I'm all in. I jump off the cliff and if he catch me, he catch me. If he doesn't catch me, then I perish. That's what that's that's what Esther was was feeling like. She was like, you know what? If I perish, I perish. We have to and come to the place of the same attitude. If I perish, I perish, but I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. For you have heard the sound of your tomorrows in your present day. Speaking of knowing what's gonna happen tomorrow in the present. You have seen the future and been given insight so that you can sow into the return that's coming. We've been talking about what's coming for six months. People are just now starting to talk about more in these last two and a half months and the closer we get to election everybody's starting to talk about uh get ready there's 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 financial economic this is getting ready to go on and you need to make sure you got this we've been talking about it for for six months holy spirit has been uh telling you put some seed in the ground because you're going to need that return in the next six months, when that af afterwards, afterwards, they're just starting to talk about it now. And so I'm not going to be talking and repeating everything Holy Spirit has said. You can go back and listen to it. It's on YouTube so that you can hear what he said to do in case you didn't do it. You know, one of the things uh, uh, that we're talking about is the sowing of seed, but it was more than just the sowing of seed. And so we have a, we've had an opportunity to hear a little bit of what tomorrow is going to look like in transition and what we need to do today. I'm a I'm a a uh, I'm bigger on the prophetic telling us what to do in the midst of what we hear rather than what do we hear and not know what to do with it. I'm a proponent of, okay, what do I do? Not just what do I hear. I want to know what to do. What do tell, me, tell me what to do with what you are releasing to the prophets. 
because hearing it and knowing that there is an economic crisis that can possibly come prophetically being spoken means absolutely nothing to me if I don't know what to do in it. So tell me what to do. Tell me if I need to, if I need to store water up. Tell me if I need to get a generator. Tell me if I need to save some money over here. Tell me if I need to give all my money away. Tell me if I need to sell my house. Tell me if I need to live off the land. Tell me if I need to, what do I need to do? Not something just to hear, right? And so he's been telling us what to do. Merging his will with his plans. I got more. I heard that the enemy's plan is to delay your harvest and cause that which you have sown to be halted and to be cut off. The enemy desires the fig tree to be that was that like the fig tree that was rebuked by Christ. He desires that fig tree rebuked by Christ, only this would be the church for not bearing fruit in the season. So the enemy is looking for hoping that we would be rebuked as a church, as the church, like the fig tree was rebuked and not bearing fruit. And so he's trying to put the church in a position for reprimand. Are you hearing me? I heard the father say we must lose, loose, L-O-O-S-E, our con inconsistency and our inefficiency. Loose inconsistency and inefficiency and keep our heads above the rushing water of dissension and degradation of foundations and all my that seemed built to last, that are being pulled away. What he was saying was that there's, there are foundations that we thought were built to last are being pulled away. Things that you held on to, things that you thought were promised that they would last, and it would endure to the end. Keep your head above water. Keep your head above water. Keep your head above the water. The turning. The churning. Keep your head above what's going on. Keep your faith above what's going on. Don't allow yourself to get uh, heart involved, emotionally involved with the churning of the water. Comfortable. He began to talk about comfortability. The bride has walked and sat in the way of the ungodly, sat in the seat of the scornful. Man has opened up her heart in agreement with idolatry. The church has opened up our heart in agreement with idolatry. This idolatry has become sickening, sickening in the earth. And, it, and the stench of it has hit the heavens. And once again, distraction is playing games like a magician with fast hands. Now listen to this. While you have watched the media and listened to the sound that fills the air, the atmosphere, your discernment has missed the actual movement. Did you hear, hear that? Did you hear that? There are a lot of things swirling around us trying to get our attention and keep our attention. The father says we're missing what, we, what we're supposed to be seeing because we're watching all this other stuff and our discernment is low. You have been deceived. You've been deceived because you're, you're missing the actual movement. 
God isn't in what you're seeing. He's not trying to show you something based on what you're seeing. He's showing you, some, he's trying to show you something based on your discernment, what you don't see that is going on. It's the sleight of hand for you of being, you're being deceived, watching things played out that are not real. You're being, listen, you're being lied to by your government. You're being lied to by authorities in both the natural place and in some spiritual places. He said, you are looking for signs and they're giving you signs. And while they take down and deactivate the faith of the church that is supposed to be detached from sight and natural insight. We are supposed to walk by faith and not by sight, Father says. That's what the scripture says. We walk by faith, not by sight. We are not to be looking at the signs that are going on around us to determine what God is saying. It's like saying the wind is blowing, a storm is coming. That's not prophetic at all. That is noticing what is going on and then determining a, a, a prophetic word based on what you see going on. But it's not about the wind that is blowing. It is not about the storm that you are involved in that the, a prophetic release needs to be said. There is no declaration that needs to be connected to just what you see in the natural. Not in this time. My prophets are speaking about what they see instead of what the Father is revealing and saying, what do you see? We are distracted and watching with eyes of flesh. We are responding to Satan's schemes and exposure of ministries and ministers. We're, we're completely responding to what they put up in front of us rather than responding to the spirit of the Lord. We are listening to the news, making prophetic determinations instead of listening to I am first. This means that this means this means that my keyboard is plugged into the news instead of my keyboard is plugged in to the word of the Lord and the heart of God. And I begin to release the sounds that I'm hearing from the media and the news and the things that the prince of the power of the air is releasing so that people can be distracted, misled, put into fear so that that door is open so other things can, can enter into that door. Rather, he wants me to be connected, you connected, us all connected, the church connected, apostles and prophets connected to his heart so that we can release what he is singing over us. We can release what he is saying over us rather than looking for hints and looking for clues in the atmosphere that is filled with demonic treachery. Satan is going about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You are being misled, you're being hoodwinked. Deception makes you vulnerable and fit for devouring. So the smells of the scent of deception are on you and it takes you out. When we say the enemy is uh, uh, going about looking for whom he may devour, meaning he's looking for someone that smells of deception. Did my deception take place in them? Because that's who I'm looking for so that I can do what I want to do in their life. He's looking for those who have been deceived. Mm -hmm. 
You wonder why you've fallen or been removed or focused on by others. These are the results of trusting in what you see rather than seeing in the realm of your discernment and responding from the place of knowing. Don't get caught up in the enemy's narrative that spins and twists the sound within the air. You hear that? Close your eyes. Take notice of what you see. Eyes closed. And hear the Lord saying, Stop following the signs because they are placed there to misdirect you. Stop following the signs. They're there to misdirect you. Wake up. Stop asking for revival. You're going to still hear people asking for revival. Wake up. Stop asking for revival. Revival will, will, will come in its time after you have sown the seeds into the ground through prayer and fasting. You must call forth a new day and establish the new through the dimension of the spirit. So into the future, the future that you want to see and stop responding to what you've been shown. OK, this is a this is a message for a realignment so that we move our heart in the direction that it needs to be. So we're not moved by what we see, what we hear, what we feel. But we're only moved by the word. We're only moved by the truth. We're only moved by what we are discerning from the spirit of God. Idolatry. Your lack of honoring the word, the word of the Lord, and honoring other sources. Being fed to you, that's idolatrous. When we begin to honor the things that are in the air, feeding our ears and feeding our eyes, Instead of honoring truth, that's idolatry. You are looking for natural leads instead of following Holy Spirit led steps and the word. That makes sense. So he began to talk to me about future and I'm going to give you four points on determining your future. There's four ways to determine your future. I'm going to give you those four ways right now. I want all of you to have these in your notes if you want to have these in your notes. But these are four ways. Sure fire guaranteed ways to determine your future they will work i would bet my life on them because the life of the father has already been made apparently bet on so the first one is through your decree you can define your future by your decree you can look at your life right now and we know, you know, what you're decreeing. You have what you say. All right? So, the scripture says, decree a thing and it will be established. And it just says a whole lot of other things, but we're using that one. That's the one I heard this morning. Decree a thing and there's establishment. That is a surefire, now, the first surefire way to determine what your future will look like. What are you decreeing out of your mouth? Your word and declaration can establish things in your future. You can say something today that will show up tomorrow. You can make a decree. I'm not talking about just talking. I'm not talking about having conversation and you say something good or you say something wrong and that shows up in your tomorrow. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, intention, making a decree, a declaration. I decree that the, when a king speaks, he speaks with authority. He speaks from uh, not conversationally, they're making a decree. They're either writing it down or they're, they're wielding their scepter and they're saying, I decree that this is this or whatever that is. It's, it's an intentional use of words, not just words in conversation. And so we're saying you say something over your life 
over your house and you begin to make a decree, that is what gets established. The second way to define your future is your seed. Sowing seed, sowing money through tithing or giving will cause a tree to sprout bearing fruit that, will, that can be harvested. What you sow, you will reap. If you want to define your future, another way is through sowing the seed. It's your seed. What you have what do you have in your hand? It is not about how much you have in your hand. It is what are you doing with what you have in your hand? If you are holding on to it so tightly because you only have a little, that is what you will continue to have. If you are holding on to it so tightly because it is so much, it will run out. The, 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 the process or principle is what you sow, you will reap. God will not be mocked. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Speaking of transition, speaking of now and later, speaking of present, and future alpha and omega sowing seed or your seed in your hand you are look look you are in control you have some authority about your future your future doesn't have to be without your authority in it involved you can do something about your future today by what you do by what you say The third one, your faith. Your faith is another way to define your future. Now we know we use faith in all of these things, but, but guess what? It doesn't take faith to know that if I plant a seed, I'm going to get some fruit off of that. I don't need faith for that. That's a principle. It, it just works. It just works without my faith, without my further assistance, except for watering it. Okay? So, faith, faith is the future. Look at your today and you will see what you had faith for yesterday. Look at your today and you will see what you had faith for yesterday. I'm almost done. It is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things unseen. It is connected to things in the future and right now. Faith is connected to things. What things you hope for or don't hope for you will or you won't see tomorrow. Faith is super, it's, a, it's like a superpower. If you want to uh, uh, align things, see certain things in your future, hope for those things today and they will show up in your future. It's connected to your future. And the fourth thing, the fourth thing to help you define your future is the new song. That's where we started and that's where we are ending. The new song will speak prophetically of a new day, birthing you in the spirit into new places, into new experiences that are only experienced through Holy Spirit establishment. 
the new song begins to establish where things are unstable. In Psalms 40, verse 3, out of the Passion Translation, it says a new song for a new day rises. In the King James Version, it says in, in verse 18, 118, Psalms 118, verse 24, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We read it earlier. Why is that important? Because David is prophesying. He is prophesying about a coming day. So his song is futuristic so that he walks in that day in the future. Even though currently, if you read Psalms 118, he wasn't walking in the day of the Lord. But he prophesied in song the day of the Lord. The highest level of praise is the prophetic. When we begin to prophesy in song of God's goodness and what he's going to do and what we see, that's the highest form of praise. So we got four things, faith, we got our seed, we have declaration, and we have the song, the song of the Lord, the new song. These things mark your future. They determine your destiny and can crack open the way for your ultimate success. Those four things. So the father said, stop idolizing the things in the world because you are being enticed and led astray. Things that are unattached to faith can be temptations to lead you astray because we don't walk by what we see. The things you receive, listen, the things you receive should be things you hoped for and saw before their arrival. Because you're walking by faith. Things that you begin to receive should be greater based on your faith than the things that are coming to you trying to distract you. This is the faith, the life of faith. If you're not declaring, if you're not sowing seed, uh, if you're not faithing forward, if you're not repeating what God is saying in song, then you are living counterfeit lives that are being mocked by the world because you aren't activating the things he's given to you as a muscle to be used in your life. The world is attempting to remove your prophetic voice out of the, the prophetic voice out of the Oval Office here in the United States. Do you hear me? In other countries, not so. Not, not, it's not the same as what it is here. He's, he's, he's attempting to remove the prophetic voice out of the Oval Office. There is a plan in place to eliminate transition and keep things controlled. Listen, loss of control is the fear of those who control others. I heard that this morning. I was like, that's good, Father. Loss of control is the fear of those who control others. So, stop prophesying to the wind. Stop because the wind the fire, the storm is being falsely created to distract you. Take your time, take your effort away as you speak to storms that are being created by man to keep you occupied. Every little storm, sometimes the church will run to and be like, I come against that storm. Satan, I, I, I renounce that storm. I rebuke that storm. I command that storm. And we spend all our time dealing with storms. <laughs> and, and, and the enemy is laughing at, at us because 
He's allowing these storms to be created so that we're distracted and not seeing what is the, the deal. We're so concerned about trying to be powerful that we're completely missing through discernment what is going on underneath the ground. I saw, I saw a classroom of people, of children. They were in a room and they were playing with specific toys. And, and uh, as I, 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 wrote it, I wrote it down, they were playing with specific toys and the kids thought that they were there for fun in, this, in what I saw. Since they had what they loved in front of them and they were able to play with these toys. So they thought they were there for fun. They, were, uh, they, weren't, they weren't meat eaters, they were milk drinkers. They, they were bottle fed, they were immature, they were happy to entertain their flesh with their idolatry instead of understanding that they were being tested. All in that room. that they were being tested. I heard the father say, you are being gathered and collectively forced into man-made situations that take your thoughts off of what's really happening while your flesh is being entertained. Be careful. Come out from among them. Come out from among them. The scripture and I close with is 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. That's my word for today. And it is a step order, ordering word. It is a word for realigning. It is a word to get the slack out of our pants. It is a word, though, that is, that is full of insight where he's saying, don't be distracted. Don't be distracted by the storm. Don't be distracted by the things that are going on in the air, things that you're hearing, things that you're seeing, the stuff that the media is putting in front of you in order to get your attention. Don't be distracted even by the fact that uh, there's, there's ministries being, where covers are being pulled off of, of ministers and, and, and ministries. Don't be distracted by what the enemy is trying to put in front of you that your discernment is not up, that you're, that you're watching something, that you're prophesying to something, that you're praying towards something that's been, that's a farce. It's a farce. It's, it's, not, it's not real. It's made up in order to get all of your energies in that direction rather than you be full of your discernment, full of faith, mighty man, woman of God, moving in strength and power to hear what the Father is saying, we end up being devoured by the enemy's schemes. So, how many of you received that word this morning? That's two. There's another. <laughs> you do what you want with it, and that's unfortunate uh, if you don't receive it. And you need to receive it, but that's up to you. If you let this thing go by, you, you, have, your, you have what you have, okay? You have what you have. The, the 
because the warning is there. You can either be moved by the things that you see or you can be moved. And this is, this is stuff we know. But the Father is trying to show us something based on what we see. And it's happening here in America. This is not happening all over the world. This is happening here in America. And, and because of the control that the spirits, the demonic spirits want to maintain. So we have to be aware of the enemy's tactics and how he is moving so we don't get caught up in those tactics. And then we're like, we're, 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 we're beating against the wind. That's what Paul said. I, he said, I, that's, that's not what you do. You don't just beat against the wind like a fighter. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you. We thank you that uh, you love us enough and to so much to not only send your son for us, but Father, to send your word and to keep revealing more of yourself. You keep uncovering uh, things that are being done, things that have been hidden, that are in the dark, things and tactics of the enemy. Thank you, Father, that you are seeing about us, that you are giving us uh, uh, just your heart so that we can move accordingly. I ask, Father, that uh, this word will not just fall to the wayside where the birds can devour it, where the enemy can come in and, and destroy what you have said. But Father, let the word fall on uh, broken ground, broken hearts so that we can hear, understand, perceive, and arise and move in the strength of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so if uh, those of you who are giving, you can give at mygiving.life, mygiving.life. And I don't say it enough, but yep, you should give. You should make an exchange. Just as I, the, the word does say that uh, that's what you should do. When you get the word, you should, you should, you should uh, bless the one that's giving it to you. All right, God bless you. And I'm going to let the online people go. We love you.